Professor Michael Marmot, the world's leading expert in social determinants of health, in his 2015 book, The Health Gap, argues, what good does it do to treat people and send them back to the conditions that made them sick? Teaching public health or preventive medicine to medical students in Sri Lanka dates back to the establishment of the medical school in 1870. At that time, infectious diseases were the leading cause of mortality and morbidity. In fact, the recommendation to establish a medical school resulted from an investigation into the causes of depopulation of the Wanni district of the northern province which identified cholera, endemic fever or malaria, and parangi as key causes. Dr. William Kinsey, who was the surgeon captain in the Army Medical Department and the longest serving head of the Civil Medical Department, in his administrative report for the year 1886, praised the school for producing doctors who were able to successfully control epidemics in the country. Dr. K. Rajasuriya, who later became a professor of medicine, recollects that the public health lectures, which were quite comprehensive and of practical interest, were taken by Dr. S.F. Chellappa, who was the director of medical and sanitary services of the country. Students also had exposure to infectious diseases at the Infectious Diseases Hospital Angoda, Leprosy Hospital in Kandana, and the Chest Hospital in Valisara. By April of 1942, Colombo campus of the University of Ceylon was established. The first Vice-Chancellor of the new university, Sir Ivor Jennings, is the architect of academic nature in Sri Lanka. A two-week resident appointment in public health at the Premier Medical Officer of Health Unit of the country at Kaluthara was initiated in the early 1940s. The MOH at Kaluthara at that time, Dr. Oyar Aberapna became the first professor of public health at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, and the founder of the Department of Community Medicine in 1949. Professor Aberapna dedicated two decades of his career to the department, ultimately becoming the longest serving dean of the Faculty of Medicine. Professor Thomas Earl Joseph de Fonseca guided the department as the head from the year 1968 to 1988. He was a case of exemplary talent in two fields, music and medicine. He was one of the key figures in the Symphony Orchestra of Sri Lanka and received the honour of Kala Kirti. Emeritus Professor Dulita Fernando was the next to hold the position of the head of department. She was awarded the Outstanding Health Professional Award in the year 2012, recognizing her outstanding contribution to the field of medicine. Both professors, Earl de Fonseca and Dulita Fernando, served as deans of the faculty. The department was also fortunate to have the services of two other senior professors, Professor Lalini Rajapaksha and Emeritus Professor Rohini de Alvis Seneviratna, parallelly. All three professors were much respected and popular among those in the field of community medicine over the past decades. During the mid-1960s, the department collaborated with the Department of Pediatrics in an interesting program called Social Pediatrics, introduced as a part of the pediatric professorial appointment. This enabled students to appreciate the social determinants of health and the links between curative and the public health sectors in providing care and promoting well-being. The creation of a field practice area for the Faculty of Medicine, Colombo, in 1974 was an important milestone which led to changes in the teaching of community medicine. This enabled students to undertake a two-week rotation in community medicine, providing them an opportunity to observe and participate in activities of the MOH area and learn about roles, responsibilities and services provided by the MOH and his team. They observed how health information is generated, collated and analysed at a community level and its use locally, regionally and at a national level for monitoring and evaluation. From 1980 to the mid-1990s, the focus expanded to include the emergence of non-communicable diseases 
through teaching of demography, statistics, epidemiological concepts, research methods, and analysis. In 1996, medical education witnessed a major shift from a traditional one to a student-centered, problem-based curriculum. This led to integrating community medicine throughout the medical program. Novel teaching learning methods were incorporated to enhance students' learning experiences outside the classroom, with more opportunities to gain knowledge and acquire skills through community engagement in both urban and rural settings. In 2018, the curriculum was further refined to ensure better integration of community medicine with other clinical fields. This has enhanced the application of a variety of fields within public health, such as occupational health, environmental health, global health, healthcare quality, etc., into medical practice relevant to Sri Lanka. The learning outcomes of community stream are directly aligned with the faculty learning outcomes. In addition to core topics in community medicine, the stream cultivates many other learning outcomes of the program, such as developing attitudes and behavior to be a compassionate and caring health professional, developing leadership, teamwork, managerial and communication skills, conducting health-related research, and developing students into self-directed learners.